Okay, we're back. Picking up right where we left off. This door takes you to the backyard. A little later, you'll have to go out and see the swimming pool. We are continuing our tour of the X-Mansion now. Uh, let's go here first. This was a bit of foyer. This door leads to the front lawn where there's a beautiful fountain. You can go see it in a little while. It's a great place to sit and read or write. Really? My two favorite things are reading romance novels and writing in my diary. I can see we're two of a kind. Later on, we'll have to get together and swap books. Yeah, it's weird. Sometimes, like, the dialogue won't continue until you press X, so... I'm kind of programmed to hit it, but then other times the dialogue will continue once they're done talking. So I'm trying to be careful with that. Believe it or not, we do take the time to sit down every once in a while and have a meal together. Just like any other family. I can't picture any of the X-Men actually cooking a meal. <laughs> you haven't lived till you've tasted Pete's barbecue or Betsy's Cornish hen. Colossus and Psylocke. This is the day room. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? There are times I find it hard to believe there's a high-tech underground level beneath this grand old mansion. An underground level? Oh, yes. But I'll leave that part of the tour to Professor Xavier. We can rewatch the cutscenes here. Keep exploring. I think that's it for the bottom level, so we can go upstairs now. Yes, it is weird that because this is a PS2 game, they can't render the top level and the bottom level at the same time. So whenever you come up the stairs, there's just this hole here. <laughs> the second floor of the mansion has bedrooms for many of the X-Men. Feel free to wander around and look in the rooms. But you see what I mean. Like, now we can't go down here, but the bottom part is rendered. This is the second floor elevator. From here, you can go to the first floor or the sub basement. I swear, every time I play this game and I see those stairs, I immediately think back to Ed's parents taking the stairs away from him when he's grounded. It's like they started doing it and then fit and then just stopped halfway through and just figured, eh, he can't jump the gap. We can just leave it like that. This is Rogue's room. You'll like her. She's a bit of a wild child. She tends to get into trouble. Well, Rogue did a few questionable. If you don't mind me, I didn't even press anything. Why to skip? Know. It's a bit complicated, but her power deals with direct skin contact, which is why she always wears gloves. Oh my god. And look at that, even the rooms in this game have personality to them. Like, they could have just made every room generic, but no, they added little flares to, you know, really portray that. One, the guys over at Ravensoft were big X-Men fans. And two, to show off all the different personalities of each X-Men. Aurora Monroe lives here. Her mutant abilities allow her to control the weather, which comes in handy with her favorite pastime, gardening. Mm -hmm. Aurora. What a pretty name. Her code name is Storm. She takes over as leader of the X-Men if Scott Summers isn't around. Yep. Because I think it was in the 90s, the X-Men team was so large they had to split them into two different teams. Storm will lead one and Cyclops will lead the other. Bobby Drake stays here. His code name is Iceman. Let me guess. He makes ice. He can freeze almost any object instantly. I'd keep an eye on him if I were you. He's a real charmer. Yeah, I mean, look at his fucking room. Dirty ass bed, clothes everywhere, and posters of women. Of course this is Iceman's room. This room belongs to the ultimate man of mystery, Wolverine. Although he's a bit rough around the edges, Wolverine's the best friend you could ever want, and the worst enemy you could possibly imagine. Both are extremely true. Like, the Canadian flag. It's... 
hang on the walls of weather Canadian flag with some writing on it. Come on back to the old varsity team anytime. Your friends at Alpha Flight, Shaman Puck, Snowbird, Sasquatch James, and Heather Hudson. Yeah, before Wolverine joined the X-Men, he was part of a Canadian super team called Alpha Flight. And it's even funnier because after he joins the X-Men, Alpha Flight and Canada are like, What the hell? The Wolverine is our like best superhero. Alpha Flight, go over to New York and get his ass back over here. This is the home of Peter Rasputin. He's pure Russian, from the top of his crew cut to the bottom of his size 18 feet. Never believe a body of steel could house such a gentle heart. Yeah, in Cyclops' room, not Cyclops, Colossus' room is where you review the concept art. Which makes sense, he is the artist of the team. I wish Kitty was in this game. That would be awesome. Especially because she was in Ultimate X-Men and in, in Ultimate Spider-Man a lot. Instead you get Jubilee. Which, Jubilee's cool, but I prefer Kitty. Alright. So, every time you go back to the expansion in between a few levels, I think, because I might be confusing this with X-Men Legends 2, but you can come here and you can answer trivia questions about the X-Men, and you'll get bonus XP if you answer them. I played this enough times and I've read a good amount of X-Men comics, so I know the answers to most of these. But I I guarantee you I will get some of these on. Like, this one I can never remember. Uh, it's not Xavier Ridge. I don't think it's Raven's Peak either. Uh... Yep. Okay. Yeah, I could never remember that one. It's the first. Cyclops was the first. Who isn't a member of the Brotherhood. Gateway. We'll meet him later. Name the machine Xavier uses. A Cerebro. Why can't Cyclops control his eyes? Head trauma. Gambit's father trained him to be a thief. Cryptologist. <laughs> Nightcrawl is originally from Germany. When Jean Grey is overwhelming, she becomes the Phoenix. Cyclops' brother is Havoc. Or the other one, who people try not to talk about. Uh, Moira runs Muir Island. Who is truly not a mutant? Juggernaut. Even though Juggernaut is associated with the X-Men, he is not a mutant. He is Xavier's half-brother who discovered this gemstone in a rural country. I can't remember the country, but he discovered this gemstone. The gem of Sidorak, and the gem of Sidorak gives him his armor, and it gives him his insane strength. So no, Juggernaut is technically not a mutant. He just has powers because of a gemstone that he keeps with him. Wolverine was forced to slay the father. Uh, Shiro Gojo. Uh, is it either Shingen or Sh Shiro? Uh, is it Shingen? Yeah, okay. Because Shiro is another character. Star Jammers. Who developed the Sentinels? Uh, that was Trask. Yeah, I haven't missed one yet. Watch as I do. Ah, crap. Went to a coffee go go to listen to a beatnik known as. Uh, okay, I just I just guessed that. Outer space base was called Avalon. Remember that. Who wears a helmet to protect themselves? It's Juggernaut. Also Magneto, the metal bonded, that's Animantium. Codename for Kitty Pride, Sprite. Although everybody prefers Shadow Cat. Toad's real name is Mortimer <laughs> Toy Bini. Or Toy it's really hard to say his last name. Aside from being a powerful type of flat, Emma Frost can also No, no. Change to Diamond Hard Substance. Moira's son becomes Proteus. For a short time, Jean Grey was a member of the Hellfire Club. Which X-Men is immune to Rogue's powers? Mutant Colossus, Gambit, Beast. Uh, is it Colossus? No, Colossus. 
No, Colossus is affected, isn't he? Banshee. No, Gambit tries, but it doesn't work. Beast tries, and that doesn't work. Okay, yeah. Even though I've seen Rogue use Colossus's powers, I guess he has to. She has to touch his skin, not his metal skin. Rogue's biggest fears in closed spaces. Yeah, you guys never thought we were playing the X-Men trivia game here, now did you? Who in this group is a mutant? Bobby Drake. What is the Xavier Protocols? Professor Xavier built Cerebro with the aid of Magneto. And sometimes it's forged, depending on the continuity. Uh I can never remember this one. See it as a Cheyenne or Navajo. Uh, I'm just gonna choose. Yes! Okay. Whew. Ah, dang it! Okay. Uh, I know it was the early 60s. So it was either 64 or 63. Uh, I'm definitely gonna get this wrong one. I'm definitely gonna get this one wrong. Oh! Okay! Who is next in line? Well, I already told you that earlier, so did Gene. It would be Storm. Psylocke is from England. Where did Jubilee live for a short time? A Hollywood shopping mall. Cyclops derives the energy for his optic blast from solar energy. And also a punch dimension. Yeah, don't bother looking it up. It makes less and less sense, but they keep it around in continuity because it's the best explanation we can come up with. When Shadow King first met Professor Xavier, he was known as Amal Farouk, for anybody who watched the Legion TV show. The Morlocks took their name from their first leader, the underground race, in H.G. Wells' novel. Uh, this one I don't remember. Okay. Gamma's power is to charge objects with kinetic energy. Jubilee is the unofficial sidekick of Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine has a weird habit of getting female sidekicks every generation. In the 80s, it was Jubilee. No, in the 80s, it was Kitty Pride, And Kitty eventually got old. And by old, I mean she hit her 20s. In the 90s, it was Jubilee. And then in the 2000s, it was Laura Kinney, a.k.a. X-23. Who would eventually become Wolverine herself by the 2010s. So, yeah. Logan having, and you know what, now that I think about it, in the 70s, it was probably Rogue. But no, I don't think Rogue joined the team until the 80s. It's been a while since I've read some X-Men, so I could be wrong about that. But Shadowcat, Kid, Shadowcat Jubilee, and X-23, I am definitely sure about. Against her will, Cyclops' mind was transferred into the body of a ninja. That's a long story that I do not want to get into. Jim and Sidorak, I brought that up earlier. Cyclops is... A nickname for Cyclops is Slim. Sabretooth and Wolverine worked together during it, operations for the CIA and Weapon X. Katie Pry has a pet dragon named Lockheed. One name Mystique goes by is Raven Darkholm. One of Storm's favorite hobbies is gardening. We learned that by going to her room. In addition to Wolverine, who has also been an experiment of the Weapon X project? No, no, yes. When did Colossus first turn into a metal skin, stopping a runaway tractor? The first five members of the X-Men were... No, it was Cyclops, Iceman, Angel, Beast, and Jean Grey. When do a mutant powers normally first activate? During teenage years. Rogue had once been romantically involved with which evil mutant? Weird enough, it was... I thought I picked Magneto. What the hell? Woohoo! Hey, look at that. Magma leveled up twice. I thought I picked Magneto. Okay, anyway... I'm going to say I won that. I answered every question right. Because I knew the answer was Magneto. There was a weird time when the two of them were trapped on uh, the Savage Land together and they had no powers. 
and I can't remember why that happened or what caused Ro to think it was a good idea to shack up with Magneto, but that definitely happened. So for her, I'm not really even going to use Magma in this playthrough all that much, but there are missions where you play it, where you have to play as her, because she is like the ride along character. So I will give her her Fiery Blast and Burning Rage. And we will boost up her strike power. Okay. So, I think we've been to all the rooms now. So now we can go down and talk to Professor Xavier again. Wait, I think I have to get the other side. Okay, yeah. This room belongs to Scott Summers. You met him in New York, the guy with the optic blasts. He was the very first X-Man, and he's the team leader. Oh yeah, I remember him. He's kinda cute. And he's kinda spoken for. Oh, I, I didn't mean to. I'm just teasing, Allison. Scott and I have been together forever. I'm lucky to have him. This is my bedroom. I've lived here off and on since I was a teenager. The next mansion is pretty much the only real home I've ever known. Man, are we gonna have a whole part with just me exploring the X-Mansion? Maybe. This is your room, Allison. If you want it. I bet you'd find the mansion a great place to learn about your abilities. I'm not sure if I want to learn about them. After what happened in New York, maybe it'd be best if I never use them again. But Allison, if you don't learn to control your abilities now, they could wind up causing far more damage later on. Come on, G. You're blocking the door. All right. This is Hank McCoy's of course, room. This is Beast we room. call him Beast, but not as an insult. You'll find out why when you meet him. If you look at him, you'd never guess he was such a bookworm. Yeah. Okay, you can look at loading screens. That's how much they cared about them. That they let people just view them whenever they want. Okay, so I think we're done with the upstairs now. We can't access these other doors, so... Let's talk to Jean and tell her that we're ready for Professor X. I'm done with it. If you're done with it... The... Like, normally you can skip the tour if you want to, but... Obviously, for people who have not played this game, I want you to experience as much of the game as possible. So, I have no problem just re-exploring the X-Mansion again and, you know, getting context for stuff that, personally, I already know, but some of you may not know about the X-Men. Because most... A good chunk of the movies are fairly decent and, you know, like, fairly decent and good. Hello, Allison. Are you ready but they don't always the portray the X-Men accurately. I'd like Jean to show me. It would be my... Once you're done... Leave. I didn't even press that option, guys. Come on. Could you take me on the sub-basement tour? Yes, indeed. You see, a majority of this facility is underground so as not to attract the attention of those who mean ill will towards mutant kind. It features state-of-the-art training equipment that helps prepare the X-Men for any challenges they may encounter. And yes, that is Patrick Stewart being Professor X. Because why wouldn't you get him? This is the war room. From here, the X-Men movies were going on at the time. For any signs of trouble. This is also where the X-Men meet to formulate combat strategies. What's that holographic globe? That is the mission control computer. I'll have to take a look at that later. Very good. Now... Would you like a tour of the sub-basement, or would you prefer to explore on your own? 
I'd like a sub-basement tour. Feel free to inspect the rooms. I'll follow along and explain as we go. Okay. So we finished exploring the main house, and now we are in the sub-basement. Man, we're going to have a good two parts with just us walking around and talking to different characters. So I'm going to cut it here, just because we're hitting that 20-minute mark. And then we will finish our tour of the entire house. We'll be exploring mostly the sub-basement. And then probably hit the danger room a bit in the next one. And then we'll get back to more combat and story. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.